Uh, the single by the Bad Brains, who were initially from Washington, D.C., now living in New York City. And uh, they're here tonight. Um, they're an unusual band. I saw them the other night. They, uh, they play, as you just heard there, uh, the hardest of hardcore and can switch immediately to uh, reggae. And uh, it's real interesting to see a lot of these young uh, hardcore kids take the stage and be dancing to that music, which uh, was the first time I'm sure most of them ever did that. Um, anyway, the Bad Brains, I think, uh, may find themselves in a position of breaking down a lot of, uh, a lot of barriers, whether they know it or not, or are aware of it. Are, are you guys aware of the fact that uh, that may be a first? Yeah. Yeah? Because it's a you must see it. I don't know how it just come as the word just come through us, you know, and it just come to the people. That's why I touch all the berries, you know, and touch everyone, no matter what color or whatever, you know. It's just a living example. And people see that, because that's what it is. Okay, so you you were, you're able to reach people, uh, like you did capture that audience, and it was the first time you know any of them had ever seen you. Um, tell me something. All right, the, this is uh, you are unusual in that you are an all black band playing to um, basically white audience. Um, how do you how do you relate to that? How do we relate to it? Yeah, I mean, it does that, does it, how does it, how did you get to this position? Uh, in other words, like, how did you get to, to be a band that played this kind of music? How did you evolve? Well, we figured if they didn't mind us being black, we didn't mind them being white. Uh huh. Okay. <laughs> and, and what have you, like, before you played, uh, you guys have been in existence for a lot of years, right? A lot. What's a lot? <laughs> well, I'm asking you. What's well, a lot? Three years. Oh yeah. Three years. Uh huh. In, in them, in them time, man, you know. Okay, and you. Uh, I guess that is a lot for. Okay. For bad. And Same people. You sort of uh, spawned something on the East Coast. Uh, um, sort of the father, the uh, hardcore scene in D.C. And uh, now in New York, you seem to be having a lot of influence. Um, how did you? I mean, how did you get to be interested in, in first of all, this one area <coughs> that you do cover, hardcore music? How did that happen? Well, it was just mainly um, the message and the music that attracted us to it, <coughs> because. The words that we saw in albums like the Sex Pistols and Dead Boys and, you know, just a lot of the uh, original pioneers of hardcore, because they were playing hardcore back then, you know, and uh, that's what I liked about it, you know, because the music had a, had a meaning to it. Not only were they just playing music, but they felt what they were playing inside. So to me, that meant they were really putting more into it. They're being more sincere. So that's what you know attracted me to it. And then, plus the energy was there, you know. Mm -hmm. So, um, have you have you encountered any particular resistance to you um, because you're a black band from these audiences? Well, you know, that's that's like life in general. Wherever you go, you're going to come in contact with people who will disagree with what, whatever your beliefs could be, you know. But uh, we don't worry about that, mm -hmm. you know. Well, it, it that was one of the things that was going through my mind, is that I know that within, like, the punk scene, um, there is a strain of racism, just like in society at large and most of these people never de had to you know never encountered a black band probably that was something new to them and yet and I wonder whether that is how does it does that affect you at all you're not even aware of that at all why don't that you answer that Earl 
Well, well to tell you the truth, man, it's like <clears throat> it's like this, everybody. I want you to listen and listen good. It's like I don't, yeah. I don't get into like you know like colors and all that, you know, to tell you the truth. I mean, I just play my music, you know. Uh huh. And so be it. If somebody has an ear, I'm sure they have an ear, you know, to listen, and then they can interpret for themselves. Uh -huh. You know, I'm sure people aren't ignorant to the fact that somebody might be on the stage, whatever color they may be, or whatever, they're still going to give them the respect to listen to their music, right? Hopefully. Or so yeah, after yeah. that, and after yeah. that, you know, it's up to them. You know, whatever happens after that is whatever yeah. happens. Okay. <laughs> well, that that's you know that's. Very nice, so and, 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 uh, and, uh, in a, in a, right, in a, so in get off that black and white deal, okay? All right, that, well, I would like to ask one yeah. more question, which is that, yeah. how, how, Fire Huh? Yeah, yeah. Fire Boom. Originally, all music came from black people anyway. So. Boom. Fire Boom, that. Um, Boom. How about the fact that you're basically <laughs> reaching a white audience, not, and you aren't reaching a black audience now. I'm reaching how people, man. People well, get off this black and but it exists. It exists. It needs but help. It, then again, people still exist too, regardless of what color uh -huh. they may be. Uh -huh. If they're Chinese, whatever, you know. I'm playing music, man. Music, you know. Right. Which has a span, you know, to reach beyond, you know, color. So let's look at it like that, okay? All right. Well, that's that's <coughs> okay. We right. will. Boom. Uh, we will. Uh, Ignore the uh, certain realities, if you wish. Um, okay, let's, let's. Okay, you say let's ignore the realities. Well, let's face the realities. Okay, right. the realities of it is, in this day and age, in these times that we're living in. For right now, a majority of the audience we relate to is white. But that's only for a time, is because they're always usually the first to get exposed to new things due to education and certain money runnings, you know? It was the same way with Jimi Hendrix, you know? Mm -hmm. At first, his first audience was same with a lot of the reggae musicians. Bunny Whaler, Jimi Hendrix, I mean, uh, Bob Marley, you know? At first, a lot of their audiences was, was white in Europe and in the U.S. Mm -hmm. Until uh, it was finally known then things switched over so for right now yeah but believe me the tables will turn that's why we don't even want to get involved with that because we're going beyond that because right now I and I just come to unite all races and all colors you know and uh, the music the reason why it goes so good hand in hand reggae and hardcore is because the vibrations come from the same place, you know, see it, which is inner strength. One is one comes from one culture, the U.S. culture, hardcore. The others from an African culture, reggae, Rastaman culture. From the beginning of the ancient days of civilization, if you really want to talk about music. That music is so old, they don't even know how old it is. You know, see it. It comes from Mount Zion. Yeah. You know where that is? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's like, uh, but right now, it's just the last days of time, and everybody's, ig Boy. everybody's ignoring the truth. They don't want to look at the reality that at any minute we can all leave the planet our children have nowhere to live after we go because the earth will be polluted so everyone is saying well let's have a good time and just do whatever we can while we can yeah. see Ronald Reagan and turned his back on his on his people <coughs> so right now we just come to deliver the word that there is there is hope that there is there isn't that you don't have to go down to the pits that you don't have to give up like our folks did and we don't have to make the same mistakes that our mothers and fathers did and get brainwashed into the system settle for a slave job or settle for some kind of little schism uh, 
bun all illusion about money it. game. You know, you make some money, maybe you get rich, and then big deal. So what? You know, living a you living in a fishbowl, and the kids know that. The youth, them, I and I, we know that. Can't fool us. That's why we just saying right now we don't want a part of the system at all. And the youth, them. Them don't, yeah, them, them don't know which direction to go, so they build their own direction. And now Ja come in the spirit at the right time, because he know they need a direction, that we need a direction. And him come yeah. now, and the prophets of them, Bob Marley and Fred Locks, Hugh Mundell, yeah, all these young youths come now, and them, them show us the word of Ja, the the true direction I of unity and go back to the land and forget all the modern ways of living because yeah, well, modern well, ways don't work. Hmm. Only ancient ways work. Yeah. Time and time again we see that. 